Hello, everyone. I'm trying to speak lightly because in episode three, I think I blew out everyone's eardrums with my hello. So I'm speaking gently or into the mic. I don't think that's a word. Hi, I'm Jackie. I am the Catalina Sea Camp director for our one week and two week Sea Camp programs. Hi, and I'm Diana. I am the Astro Camp Summer Director. So we have one week and two week programs as well. Up on the mountain. Up on the mountain. So this episode, we wanted to talk about things that we've noticed over the years that campers bring to camp that can affect their time in camp sometimes, that can maybe make it a little more difficult or maybe stressful. But these are things that we've noticed and we think that there's stuff that you can do as parents to prepare before camp. Yeah. Um, conversations you could have with your campers before camp. So we kind of just want to go into detail about some of the things we've seen. Um, Heard. A lot, yeah, a lot of this is just over time talking to a lot of different parents. Um, there's some commonalities and and also things that we see when camp's actually happening and trying yeah. to help families prepare for it. We want to make that transition to camp and through camp as smooth as possible. And so these are a few things that we yeah. And we want to think about. We also want to normalize these things. Yes. That was something we were talking about earlier. Is some of these topics. You're, when you say them, sometimes people are like, ooh, or like, mm, yeah. but we don't want it to feel that way. These are normal things, and um, we just want them to be a conversation that we can have with your campers and you can have with your campers. Yeah. Um, so the first topic that we wanted to touch base with um, was bringing friends to camp. And not like camp friends, but like a friend from school mm-hmm. or even like a cousin Um Someone from outside of camp, bringing them into camp and having them in camp. Yeah. So um, I would say at Astro Camp, we're probably maybe 60% people coming on their own and about uh, 40% coming with a friend or a sibling. Um, It's common. A lot of kids feel more comfortable when there is another person, human that they know. Um, I have families that want to come but don't have anybody else and they're nervous about their child coming by themselves. And I, I want to encourage that like that is a very healthy and normal process. Um, and coming to camp alone, if I was to choose as the camp director, I would like kids that came by themselves. Mm. But also it's a wonderful experience to share with a friend too. So we want to talk about common things that we see when... Um, a camper comes with with a friend. With a friend. What is kind of your ratio ish? I would say it's about the same. Yeah. I mean, it's definitely more kids that come alone. Yeah. But it feels like there's a lot of kids that come with friends. Sure. Um, but mainly because we really pay attention to it. Because yeah. when we're doing housing, for example, we want to make sure we're not putting yes. a camper's coming yeah. by themselves with a camper who's brought three friends or one friend. Um, so we're definitely looking for it and taking note of it. Um, so it's it's not as much. It's really not that much. Like if you're a parent right now and you're like, oh my gosh, my kid's coming alone. Like it's going to be fine. Um, and honestly, in my personal opinion, it is more likely that the campers who come alone are going to have an amazing, a better experience. I mean, the campers that come with friends have awesome experiences. I'm not saying that they don't. Um, but there can be conflicts. <laughs> we see yeah. a lot of um, fighting in between friends and family members that come from outside camp. Yeah, I think like a lot of camp uh, campers that come with a friend, they might be like classmates or, um, you know, f- uh, small friend groups in a community or cousins, um, mm-hmm. like we've mentioned. But those um, maybe you haven't spent an entire week together. And so this is their first time doing a very long time um, where you're sleeping in the same room. Maybe you've had a couple sleepovers, which is a great introduction, but it's also um, not as long. And so that can just lead to a little bit of disagreements. Also, what we see with campers um is that when you come to camp, you learn a lot about yourself and you have different interests. And um, we've seen campers that come with a friend and have different interests uh, interests Mm -hmm. and try and like 
I don't know. They want to explore yeah, that. Or they make another yes, friend that yes. maybe doesn't get along with exactly. that friend. And they it's almost like there's a little bit of a block. Yeah. It, it makes it harder for them to really branch out and explore new things. Yeah. Um, and again, I we are not trying to take away from the experience of campers who come with friends. Like, yeah, they do have an awesome time. And it's a great way for your camper to really feel comfortable and like get the feel for camp with someone that they feel really comfortable with. So we're not discouraging that. Um, but I recommend for parents who have campers who are coming with friends or family members, have a discussion, start talking about it, you know, asking them, Hey, what do you think would happen if you made a really good friend and, you know, cousin blank blank, or this person that you're friends with at school doesn't really want to be friends with them. Like, what do you think he would do? Um, and just kind of maybe get them to start thinking about things like yeah. that, uh, because they might be faced with it at camp. Yeah, it, and your camper is going to be placed in a group of about eight to ten campers. And so maybe your child comes with another uh, friend, but they're going to be still in a cabin group with six other kids. Mm -hmm. And so really it's having the dialogue of like, trying to encourage them to utilize that opportunity to build friendships outside. It's really hard for counselors when there's little clicks amongst the group and they don't want to intertwine. Our counselors are excellent about building their their group dynamic and I think they really excel at that and we cover a lot of that in training yeah. um, to help that. But having that first conversation with your kids is really going to help us out as a camp and help your camper's experience be even better. There are so many things you could like sending your kid to camp. I mean, I don't have a kid, so I don't really know. But I can imagine that if I had a camp, if I had a kid going to camp, the buildup of camp could be such a great way for you to start conversations with them that maybe normally you wouldn't have um, and and kind of reach in and, and go into different topics that they might experience at camp that you can talk about before they go to camp. And I think bringing friends and family is a great one to talk about just because we've seen there's been things that have happened where we're like, mm, Maybe they shouldn't have brought their friend from soccer. <laughs> yeah. Friend from soccer doesn't like the things that they like. Maybe at home when they're playing soccer, but not in camp. Um, yeah, I think that kind of yeah, hits that sure. topic. Um, next thing we want to chat about is when the sun goes down. When the sun <laughs> goes down. There's got to be a country song about that. Um, <laughs> when the sun goes down. And we want to normalize the maybe anxiousness that you feel as a parent about your camper falling asleep at night. We get a lot of questions. I mean, I would say parents are like, what does nighttime look like? What happens if my kid can't sleep? Yeah. What happens if they're, you know, scared and yeah. like having issues? Um, so we kind of want to talk a little bit about what we do at nighttime, how nighttime works at camp for us, um, things that we see in ways that you can prepare your kid for bedtime at yeah. camp. I know. It's like the dreaded, like, They've never slept away from home before for this long. Yeah. And a week might seem really long to you and your camper. It flies by. Mm -hmm. um, and two weeks fly even faster. I don't know how time works in camp. It's very different. <laughs> but um, there, you know, the important thing is to know that they're staying incredibly active. And that can help a lot with like the nighttime and the homesickness component. Um, what we see is the first 48, 48 hours is the biggest adjust, adjustment. Mm -hmm. That's a hard word for me. <laughs> uh, that's the biggest adjustment for our campers. Um, because they're coming into a new place, there's a lot of social anxiety that comes into coming to camp. And then um, they're building and making friends and they're active, but they're in a different routine than they're familiar with at home. Um, they might, you know, they might be going into the summer, have had a few weeks out of school. So like they're sleeping in, but we don't wake up, wake up super late at camp. We yeah. wake up early because um, we have a lot of activities to get to. So the a schedule can lead to a lot of um, changes in homesickness at night mm -hmm. um, because they're not used to being at, um, at home like that. On the very first day, like within hours of your camper getting into camp, meeting their bunk mates, meeting their counselor, they all sit down as a group and they do a discussion, a cabin discussion. And we call it cabin guidelines because they have a sheet of paper and they kind of talk in a crew about, hey, what are some things we need to do 
to make sure that we're living comfortably together. We're going to be in this space for one week, two weeks. You know, what are some things, Diana, that you like to do? When yeah. you're, you know, and then they kind of talk about it. But it's a very guided discussion by the counselor. And there yeah. are some buzz topics that we make sure that they talk about. And one of them is bedtime. Yeah. Um, so we train our counselors to say, hey, let's talk about bedtime. You know, this is around the time we're going to start getting ready for bed, putting our pajamas on you know, having, brushing our teeth. Um, and we can do something as a group before we go to sleep every night and something mellow. Um, in the past, we've listened to music. You can decide what kind of songs you want. Mm-hmm. Um, we could read a book. If there's a book you really want to read, we can try and get that. I've done meditations. We could do rosebud thorns. And we kind of start this discussion with the cabin of what can we do as a group to wind down for the night. Yeah. And it tur- and we, we want to create their own camp bedtime routine. Yeah. I mean, that is the goal. And with that, um, it really, I think, helps a lot. So something I think you can start doing with your camper to prepare is asking them, what are some things you would like to do before you go to bed? Like if you're in a group setting, you know, you're with your counselor and all your friends and you're in your pajamas. Like, would you like to read a book? You know, maybe we can do some of those things now, just kind of getting them used to it. Yeah. Um, there's nothing cuter than eight, nine-year-olds all around at bedtime being read a bedtime story by a counselor. Or or, or, so or meditations. Like, yeah. when you do meditations with, with like, nine-year-olds, eight-year-olds. Oh, it's, uh, I mean, the 13, 14-year-olds are cute, too. Don't get us wrong. Yeah. <laughs> but they, it, well, it's funny. You know, I would say eight-year-olds are the less likely ones to get homesick. At yes. least for us. It's yeah. almost like they get to camp and they're like, it, they are so excited that they get so much choice. Yes. Um, and I think that, bad. and they're so tired. Mm-hmm. Um, and so they just kind of knock out um, in the um, in the evening, just kind of yeah. getting to sleep. And we train our counselors on homesickness and how to help them through. Um, like I said, those first two nights, you'll see like a little bit of like, oh, I miss my mom mm-hmm. or I miss my dad or I miss whatever routine pets that's mm-hmm. a big one yeah. um, that they miss. And it's in that downtime that we see those kind of feelings come up. So we train our staff on how to approach it, how to listen, how to give some like positive reinforcement on that um, and, and normalize it because it is going to happen. It is real. Mm-hmm. We have staff that deal with homesickness as well. It's hard to be <laughs> away. Jackie misses her home. Oh, <laughs> um, so we... It's very real. We handle it. I've seen parents do a lot of really cool things to help um, their camper and not saying like, you're not going to be homesick. It's not good to set unrealistic expectations. Frame it in a way of like, when you feel homesick, um, here is a picture of us as a family or a picture of your pet. um, And uh, just give us a little kiss um, to go to bed or... Um, I've seen, you know, a lot of uh, children will bring different stuffed animals um, or a blanket that feels very comforting, things that feel very comforting from home. Um, Campers that have a little bit of anxiety, um, a lot of sprays like pillow spray can be really smoothing and help them smoothing and help them go to sleep. Um, The new environment and multiple people in a room can be new for a kid. So having a conversation with your camper about what it's like to have a roommate and, um, you know, if you like to sit up and read um, while others are not, like, to have the conversation with the counselors Mm -hmm. about that. Um, But all of those uh, things. There was one more. Um, Oh, envelopes. I saw a parent once um, wrote little notes for every day put them in envelopes labeled by the day and then like the camper was able to like pull it out and it was a little encouragement and uh what we hear correct me if i'm wrong like what we hear from kids is like they're always afraid of how their parents are doing and Mm -hmm. the parents are always afraid about how they're doing but they're like i don't know if they got home okay i don't know if like (laughs) What if they're missing me too much? And you're like, they probably are, but they're also (laughs) excited for you to be here. So framing bunk notes, framing um, any type of letters you might leave for them in a really positive way of like, we love you and I cannot wait to hear about 
all the cool things that you're doing. Like, what did you do today? Tell me more. Mm-hmm. You know, write it down. Mm-hmm. Um, I give these little notebooks. I oh, yeah, yeah. buy them from Amazon. Um, and a lot of times when kids are having a hard time processing being away, I tell them to write down everything, feelings, mm-hmm. everything into this book or draw it or whatnot. And then yeah. it's kind of a little journal for them. Um, that's and that's cool. been you give that successful. To every kid? No, not every kid. Kids that need it. Mm, like camper that comes to you yeah. and is like, I'm feeling this way. And you yeah. can say this is for them. That's I talked to the counselors about that too. Like yeah. if your camper needs a little notebook. Or a stuffed animal. Like I have a yeah. box of stuffed animals in my yes. office. So if a camper comes, yeah. I can be like, this is for you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was a camper when I was 17 years old. And I was incredibly homesick my first two days. Really? Yes. And I remember like having many freak out attacks Uh because I would just be in the cabin like, and I was at the three week program. So I was like, I'm going to be here for three weeks. I want to go home. Like I remember remember thinking I was like so stressed out. And, um, you know, I think if I could think about the things that helped me, one, my counselor, mm-hmm. her name is Fiona. I'm dropping her name because she might watch this. <laughs> Hi, Fiona, shout out. Um, and then uh, my mom gave me one of her big shawls. Oh. It was like a scarf shawl that she like wrapped around. And it was also kind of like a blanket. And she said, she just was like, take this to camp and you can like sleep with it. Oh my gosh, that made such a difference. That's so cute. It smelled and, like her. It was yeah. hers. And I was like, oh, like at nighttime, I was like, I could do this. I could do this. And then after like two days, I was like, I never want to leave. Like this is the best yeah. place ever. So I think, you know, that that's what worked for me. You know, maybe you can, yeah. you have a little trinket you can give your kiddo to bring to camp. That could help as well. One thing I want to ask for parents um, to do us a little bit of a favor Um When dealing with homesickness, it can be incredibly difficult when families will make deals with your camper. And I totally understand Mm -hmm. the like logic behind it. You don't want to push your child past what they're capable of. And we don't want that either. We really, really don't. And so like if there's a homesick issue that is consistent and really intense and really affecting that camper's experience, we're going to be calling you. Mm -hmm. We are going to be communicating about that. And we'll be having a dialogue on what we're doing and how to help. Um, And not to say there haven't been times where kids have had to go home because it just, they did as far as they could. Uh, We really don't want that. We see a lot of success when kids um, are able to kind of find the endurance and yeah to get through fun in it. but what can be really hard is when the deals come out like if you're feeling homesick I'll come and get you or just try and make it three days or just try and make it one week mm. because that has planted a seed in the camper's brain that like I only need to endure this amount of time and then they're only looking to that deadline and and it can be really consuming and Mm -hmm. they forget about all the other experiences or not as open to the suggestions and processes that we put in place to help people um, get through their homesickness which I would say we're like 99% effective. Mm -hmm. Um, We want to team with you. Yes. We are a team. Yes. Us and you as parents. Um, And when you give those like deal breaker or those ultimatums or those, you know, this is the deal to the camper that we're not in on, we get shut out. Mm -hmm. Like it's almost like campers are like, ha ha, mom didn't say that. So what you're saying don't work. Um, and that can, it can be challenging. It can make it really hard. Yeah. Encouraging them to communicate their feelings is important. And bunk notes, which we've talked about, mm-hmm. I think are ready. Yeah, we have. Um, and you'll learn more about that as you get closer to the summer. But like bunk notes are a great way to communicate, but also like yeah. as much as needed. Team with us. Yeah. <laughs> we will call you and work with you when we um when we feel that it's time to do that and the power they feel at the end oh my gosh when they made it through yeah it's it's good it's great i i just want one little story before we go into the last i know it's like um i had a family that i had been talking with before the summer first time family camper was a younger camper around 10 years old Um, and he struggled at nighttime and, you know, we worked together. I was in communication with the family the whole time. 
it was never that he was unsafe. He just like had like he had been with the family. It was right after COVID. So it was like so much oh connection gosh, yeah. and like just but we made it through. And he was so proud of himself on the last day. He was like in the biggest grin I've ever seen. And uh, the parents came to pick him up and I saw them and they were crying because they were so happy. And then I was crying and it and the camper was crying. It was just this beautiful connection where we all just like hugged and we're like, we made it through. Oh, and it was just awesome. like a beautiful experience um, and a really powerful one that you can have in your family. Yeah, no, it it can be life changing for your camper to help them and encourage them to do something that's hard. Yeah. Um, do we want it to just real quick bring that up? Oh, just gonna we're yeah. just gonna touch on speaking about normalizing. Speaking about normalizing, we're normalizing a lot of things here. Yeah. Uh, nighttime accidents, wetting the bed at night, yeah, happens all the time at all age range. At all age range. Um, so we just want to be really transparent about that. Yeah. So I guess I'll talk real quick about what sure. we do. Um, in all of our, in about, well, not every single cabin, but all of our leader counselors, so there's about six in each crew, um, there is a big bin, and it has clean sheets, clean everything you need, so that in the middle of the night, if something were to happen, your camper can wake up the counselor, they're in the, ca- they're in the cabin with them, they can collect all the things, put a new sleeping bag, new sheets, everything, put it in the washer, it's like it never happened. Um, that happens in the middle of the night. If it's in the morning, you know, sometimes campers wake up and are like, oh my gosh, oops, I slept through this. Yeah. Um, that is, the, it's part of the counselor's training. When they wake up the campers, one of the first things they do when they walk in the cabin is give a little silent, <laughs> <laughs> little sniff sniff test. <laughs> and if there's signs um, or smells or anything, it's very like relaxed, you know, get the campers out, brush their teeth approach the other camper if they haven't come and approach the counselor and just say, Hey, do we need to clean your sleeping bag? No worries. Let me know how I can help you. It's, it's very, we really try to make it the most natural conversation. Uh, the least big deal that it's it could possibly small, like, be. It is not a big deal. We have a million extra sleeping bags, a bunch of extra sheets. We have full unit washers and dryers in camp. Um, and things get happen. They happen. It happens really fast, and it's really, really yeah. easy. Uh, I would say the biggest thing is if your if your camper someone that wets the bed, they need to be able to advocate for themselves just in case. I mean, I've seen situations where a camper pees the bed and doesn't say anything to anyone, and nobody notices for a while for yeah. the like, whole time sometimes really oh, yeah. yeah like sometimes hard, yeah. they just are like so they just let it just let it happen yeah. and they're just they just put towels and i mean i've seen those cases and um when we find out about it it's always this like i was really embarrassed i didn't yeah. feel like i could go to anyone right. and that is oh man we want we do not want that we try really hard to create the conversation beforehand and talk about it yeah um, and I talk about in orientation, like if you need anything, if anything happens to you, if you need a new sleeping bag, you know, I don't say bedwetting, but like, yeah. if you need a new sleeping bag, if you need a new towel, you know, yeah. come to your counselors. Like we have all those things for you. You, you have yeah. to be able to advocate and talk to us about things that you need. So I would start those conversations now. Yeah. Really smart. Um, and if that's a common thing that maybe happens at home, Put that in our um, our oh, forms, yes. like our experience, camper, camper experience. experience we have uh, different forms. All of that is private information. It is shared only with your camper's counselor, and that counselor is not going to be sharing that with the group. I think parents sometimes are afraid that it might put their kid in a bad light mm-hmm. or whatever. Mm-hmm. That is not – the more we can be prepared for it, the more that we can help it not be a big deal for right. your camper. Um, we are similar – Um, I would say the other thing that can happen sometimes is um, during activity, Mm -hmm. um, kind of accidents that Mm -hmm. can happen. Um, They get really excited and we're doing fun stuff. And who wants to miss out by going to the bathroom? And then all of a sudden you realize you really need to go to the bathroom. And and it's so far. (laughs) And it's so far away. And like it can Mm -hmm. totally be embarrassing. But we have ways to prepare for that mm-hmm. too um and to make that 
um, you know, be okay for your camper. Yeah. So uh, if that's something that maybe happens at school, at home, just have that conversation that these are people, the counselor is the person that they can go to mm-hmm. if that is happening and that we have resources for them. Yeah, totally. Yeah. And if you have any questions about that or sure. concerns or if there's like, you know, some parents are like, my, make sure that my camper goes to the bathroom before yeah. they, you know, our counselors send them to go brush yeah. their teeth and do everything. But if, if there's a camper, we need to be like, hey, Diana, let's make sure we go to the bathroom before yeah. we go to bed. You know, those things are so helpful for us and make yeah. it a lot easier to to yeah. make it a simple, normal thing. Sure. Um, okay, we're going to touch real quick on campers that like to bring makeup. <laughs> and Dyson air wraps. And don't get me wrong, I love the glam. Okay, I there's nothing wrong with wanting to do your makeup and your hair um, at camp. And I, I think the biggest things is one, there's not a lot of time. No, there's not a lot of time. We do have events. I mean, we have dances and silent discos and fun things like that. Which I mean, I encourage everyone to bring glitter and like fun things to to wear. Um, but if if I mean, I would start talking to your camper now if there's someone that likes to wake up every morning and do their hair and makeup. Yeah. Because uh, it's it's just very hard to do that in our facilities. Um, yeah. We don't have a lot of outlets. We don't... I mean, things get broken. Things get things get lost. We never encourage to bring the nicest things to camp yeah. in any capacity. Um, but... Uh, and if you do, kind of know that you might walk away with it in a different condition and yeah. and not it because anybody's doing anything to it but it's just summer camp so mm-hmm. uh label it too labels um oh but yeah there's different events and makeup is kind of fun and yeah yeah so if your camper has those things and they're like mom or dad should i bring this you know you could say it's not something you're going to be able to wear all the time actually we encourage them not to um just because it's better that we're putting sunscreen on everywhere yeah, exactly. and like you know we're sweating we're in the ocean we're in the pool yeah. like it's just a lot yeah. um so those are good conversations to kind of start talking about now um okay do we want to go on to our last topic sure okay this topic we are going to talk about when your camper has their period at camp yeah um maybe they have their period at camp for the first time ever that ha- has happened um maybe yeah, they've yes. had their period before but it's like yeah kind of new they're not really sure it's maybe not regular and they might have it at camp they might randomly have it at camp yeah um maybe your camper doesn't know anything about periods and then they meet someone at camp who's has had their period and talks a lot about it this is a very common regular normal thing that is all the time happening at camp I'm just yeah gonna say that that but we, we don't never, talk about yeah, we don't talk about it and jackie and i both were like this is important yeah. To talk about and make sure that our families and our campers feel comfortable because yeah. it is normal. Yeah. I mean, I, so I, yet what sparked the idea in my brain was last week I probably had three different conversations with parents who said, I think my daughter's going to have their period for the first time at camp this summer. What do you do? Yeah. Um, well, you're in the ocean so much too. So I mean, ours, yeah, is, it's a little more intense. Pool, but yeah. Yeah, because you're in a bathing suit yeah. and you're in the ocean every day at sea camp. Yeah. Um, so I guess I'll just talk a little bit about kind of our process, how we go through it. We spend a lot of time during training week talking about periods. I, yeah. I, I mean, our, yeah. a lot of our male counselors just kind of sit there. I'm like, this is important for you to hear. Yeah. Okay, you're going to listen to this. <laughs> but, um, we, you know, they don't, they're not involved in any of the conversations we have with our, with our campers. But um, when we do our guidelines, our cabin yeah. guidelines, again, it's huge. This is such a big, important time for, for counselors to start these conversations with their campers um, after they talk about nighttime. They'll also bring up, and depending on the age, usually the 12, 13, 14, 15-year-old campers are the ones that are having these discussions. Um, yeah, more most of the time. Yeah. Um, the counselor will bring it up in the sense of who here has started their period or who here mm-hmm. thinks that they might start their period while they're at camp. Um, that's some way that they've started. Or... Um, I'm someone that might start my period while I'm in camp. And these are things that I like to do. If this is something that you might feel like will happen, 
you can do these things as well. And these things are, we have everything you need at the nurse's station, but also every counselor has like a pack, like a, like yeah. a little emergency pack that has tampons, different size pads. Um, in the nurse's station, there's mitol, ibuprofen, Tylenol, you know, maybe your camper gets migraines, maybe they get headaches, maybe they get really bad cramps. Um, all of these things are available. We have heating pads um, and we have different bathrooms that aren't normal to like the regular, everybody uses these bathrooms. It's more private restrooms, like in the first aid station, um, in some of the like the housing units that are above our office, there's more private bathrooms there. So if a camper's like, I just need a private bathroom, we can get them yeah. that. Um, if your camper starts their period and they're like, I'm freaking out and I need to call home, we let you call home. Um, calling home is not something we encourage. We don't like tell campers they're allowed to call home really ever. But I have no problem letting someone call home if they want to talk to mom or dad about what they're going through. Yeah. I think um, we have dormitory style housing at Astro Camp. So um, our identifying girl dorms will have a, like a whole little caddy there that has um, some different supplies that they can go to. And it's in an open space, so it, like it can be grabbed at any time mm -hmm. um, without like the uncomfortability of other people watching you or you having to ask. Um, However, you know, we have conversations about how to dispose of things appropriately, mm -hmm. that sort of thing. Our sewage system um, at both of our camps can't handle a We lot. have signs in all the bathrooms, yeah, too. Signs. So I'm sure some kids are like, what does that mean? Nothing <laughs> on the toilet other than toilet paper. <laughs> but we do talk about that. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, and we can, we encourage, you know, uh, I've had our older two week campers that uh, have shared with their counselor that they're just like not able to do an activity that day because of a certain situation and we'll figure out a, a solution that's fits yeah. best for them. Yeah. I mean, I think, I mean, at C camp when we, the way we talk about it with counselors and with staff is we want this to be comfortable. We yeah. want your camper to feel like this is, this is weird. I don't like this. But I feel like I can go to people. I feel yeah. like I can tell my counselor what's happening and I need a minute. Or mm -hmm. I do not want to snorkel. I'm not, I cannot get in the water right now. We totally get it and we will not force your camper yeah. to get in the water or do anything they don't want to do. Um, that, you know, I don't want anybody to feel like, ah, oh, if I go to camp and this happens, like... I'm stuck or, you know, I'm by myself, you know, they're not alone. And that's why we try to encourage these conversations during our guideline talks, because for most of the time, everyone in the cabin is experiencing the same thing, but yeah. they're not talking about it. <laughs> and it's like, this is a great opportunity for, yeah. for us to just like, let it out and be yeah. like, this is what I need in these times. And, or like, yeah, this might happen. And if it does, like, I don't even know what I'm going to do, but yeah. Jackie, you've talked about it. I'm going to go to you. Um, and we're, we really just want to make it a comfortable normal experience for your camper. I wanted to bring up, and we'll put the link in the description of the video, but there are bathing suits out there for teens um, that are period bathing suits. Um, so cool. I've never actually used them. I know that some of the instructors on the island <clears throat> use things like this, um, but they're bathing suits, and the, the brand that I always look at is the NYX. It's K-N-I-X. NYX, they, I think they do like period underwear and things like that. Yeah. But they have these bathing suits. There's one pieces, two pieces. They look like normal bathing suits, but they have a lining in them that doesn't require a pad. I don't even think you need a tampon. I mean, mm -hmm. I'm not sure. I haven't used it myself, so it's hard for me to fully give you that um, yeah. full recommendation. But I think that's a really great place to start. Um, if your camper is nervous about it happening, you can say, hey, let's get this bathing suit and you can try it out. You know? Yeah. And they can even say, hey, to their counselor, I got this bathing suit. I don't know if it's going to work. I want to try it out. Maybe we can throw it on, come jump in the water <laughs> and like see how it feels. I mean, really, yeah. we we are we are not trying to put anyone in a box. We sure. want people to feel like they can live their life at camp, even in the times where things feel uncomfortable or, you know, not good. We don't want that. We don't want a period to keep your camper from having a great time at camp. Yeah, exactly. 
So, and if there's anything, like, you, if you know anything, you know, if you have any information, again, we're a team. <laughs> we're a team. Um, we want to hear from you. We want to talk about it. You know, give us whatever information you can that can help us help you and help your camper um, have a really good time. Yeah. So. These are just some little things. Yeah. It, it's really interesting because... Um, with camp, like you think you're just, you know, sending them to activities, but there's all these little other, um, components that can, um, cause a lot of nerves Mm -hmm. for campers Mm -hmm. and for parents coming in. Um, and we want to be able to talk to you about it. And so we highly encourage you to give us a call. Um, yeah, we can, we can talk more, but hopefully that was helpful for you. We'll show some links, um, in the description about homesickness, about these awesome bathing suits and um and uh yeah yeah reach out if you need anything um our next episodes will be coming out probably hopefully every month we're gonna try and drop one we might drop a couple of months as we get closer to summertime our next episode that will be coming out shortly soon after this one is all about diving diving at camp so if that is yes we'll have our dive director peach um, she will be here in office hearing from the one and only. So No way. That's so fun. Yeah, it'll be great. Um, but thanks for listening. Thanks for tuning in. Thank and uh, yeah, we'll talk to you later. <laughs>